Commodore Amiga 2000 is the modern toolkit for the graphic designer. The purpose of this videotape is to familiarize you with some of the software and hardware available that a graphic designer can use. An easy to use mouse, sketch pad, and video camera help transfer ideas into sharp, dazzling graphics. A color printer or film recorder produce crisp and beautiful results from artist concepts. The Amiga's user interface is called Workbench. By moving the mouse, the pointer moves on the screen. The left mouse button is the selection button. Clicking once with the pointer over an icon selects or highlights that icon. Twice in quick succession will invoke that icon's function. For example, double clicking on the disk icon will open a window showing what's on that disk. The right mouse button is the menu button. By holding this button down and moving the pointer across the top of the screen, the menu categories are revealed. A highlighted option in a category is executed by releasing the menu button. Many paint programs are available for the Amiga 2000. One is Deluxe Paint 2 by Electronic Arts. By double clicking on the Deluxe Paint 2 icon, the program loads and runs. In Deluxe Paint, the best screen resolution and the right range of colors is chosen for the job. Select OK by pressing the left mouse button once. This is the painting screen. By moving the pointer to the top of the screen and then pressing and holding down the right mouse button while moving across, many features of the program are seen. On the right side of the screen are the tools and colors that can be used. The tools include 10 handy brushes in the top box. Below are the main drawing tools which can be selected by clicking once with the left mouse button. Below the tools is a box that shows the foreground and the background colors assigned to the left and right mouse buttons when drawing. The bottom section shows the palette of colors available. Select bright blue for the background using the right mouse button, click clear, and the screen is changed to the new background color. Select the freehand drawing tool, a brush, and a color. Notice that the brush can be sized by clicking on the brush tool with the right mouse button and dragging it to the desired size by holding down either button. To draw in the foreground color, simply hold down the left button and move the mouse. To draw in the background color, use the right mouse button instead. Click undo to remove the last change made to the picture. Select clear to erase the entire screen. Now, this is the box tool. Like the circle, ellipse, and polygon tools, it has two halves. By clicking on the top left corner, an outline of a box is produced. Click on the bottom right, and the box is solid. The straight line can be used to create lines in any direction. If the grid tool is turned on, lines will snap into position over an unseen grid, making it quicker to make even lines. To create a curve, the curve tool is chosen. Click once on the brush tool and drag a rectangle around an image by holding down the left mouse button. Release the button and an exact copy of the image is attached to the pointer. The brushes can be saved and loaded at any time. Size, flip, rotate, and bend them. There are quick key commands for most of these menu options. For example, to flip a brush quickly, use the X and Y keys. This is the mirror tool. By clicking the right mouse button, an option requester is called up. Click on the default number, delete it, and enter 1. Select place, and by moving the crosshairs with the mouse, the mirror's center can be changed. Select the freehand drawing tool and a different color. Notice that a mirror image appears simultaneously.
Mirror can be turned off by clicking on the highlighted tool. The paint bucket tool can be used to fill any enclosed area with color. It also has an option requester brought up by clicking the tool with the right mouse button. A gradient fill can be made by choosing a direction and then OK. Notice that the menu now has a small box in it and depending on which color is picked for the foreground shows a gradient of colors. Click the right mouse button on the current color box to change the color palette. Any one of the 32 displayed colors can be changed from a palette of 4096 by moving the slider bars. By clicking a color, then spread, and a second color, a smooth transition between the two is created. Now click range and a color, and the gradient color fill range is changed. An unwanted fill can be stopped by pressing the space bar. Move the pointer to the top of the screen, press and hold down the right mouse button, and select the Make Stencil Mode in the menu. The stencil mode protects certain colors from being drawn on. Click on the colors to be protected. Now the tools will only affect those colors not chosen. The perspective mode is another versatile tool. After a brush is cut out, swap to a spare screen with the J key or menu option. Pressing the enter key on the keypad enters perspective mode. A rectangle that represents the size of the brush can be rotated around its three axes by playing with the number keys. Seven and eight rotates the brush around its X axis, four and five around its Y axis, and 1 and 2 around its Z axis. 9, 6, and 3 will reset the corresponding axes. By moving the brush around the screen, the image will appear to go in and out of space. Click the mouse, and the computer draws the image. Once an image is finished, use the right mouse button to select Save from the menu. Name it in the file slot, and make sure it is directed to the correct disk. That's all there is to it. Drawing tablets will give the artist, unfamiliar with using a mouse, the feel of a pencil. One tablet is A-Pro-Draw from R&DL Productions. It consists of A-Pro-Draw software, a Summa Graphics tablet, and stylus. The stylus tip and button are functional analogs to the left and right mouse buttons. To draw and select tools, push down on the stylus tip. And to activate the menus, Press the top button. Connecting the tablet to the back of the Amiga is easy. Plug the large connector of the tablet's inverted Y cable to the serial port. The other end attaches to the tablet's power supply. The modular connector at the end of the cable from the stylus or optional puck is plugged into the bottom of the tablet. For the Amiga 2000 to recognize the tablet as an input device, a software driver must be loaded. To activate the tablet, simply double-click on the A-Pro-Draw icon. The tablet is especially helpful for tracing previously drawn images or photographic material onto the screen. Another form of input is called digitization. The DigiView system from NewTek will reproduce any image or object directly into the computer. DigiView can digitize in as few as two or as many as all of the Amiga's 4096 colors at once, utilizing the special Hold and Modify or HAM mode. The DigiView package consists of digitizing software and a small interface called a video digitizer. An RCA to RCA cable connects to the digitizer. 
The other end will need an RCA to BNC adapter to plug into the BNC connector on any video camera. An inexpensive black and white surveillance camera, such as the Panasonic WV1410 camera, will give excellent results. A camera is usually mounted to a copy stand under which the material to be digitized is placed. The CS1 copy stand here requires assembly. The camera stand attaches to the wood platform with a screw. Holes need to be drilled into the side of the platform to mount the two light brackets. Two GE Miser circ lights provide the most even, strong white light needed to illuminate the copy being digitized. A color filter wheel comes with DigiView so that a black and white camera can digitize in color. There's also an automatic unit called DigiDroid. The camera mounts onto the stand with the filter wheel or DigiDroid sandwiched between the two. DigiDroid is powered by connecting its cable to a mouse port. The DigiView software presents a format screen upon loading similar to the one on Deluxe Paint. The desired resolution is selected, followed by OK. Before digitizing, the camera must be focused. Now, this can be accomplished by temporarily unplugging the camera's RCA cable from the DigiView interface and plugging it into the monitor's composite video input connector and pressing the CV BS RGB button inside the monitor's front panel. The monitor now shows what the camera sees. After focusing, the RCA cable must be unplugged from the monitor and back into the DigiView and the CV BS RGB button reset to the RGB position. Instead of unplugging and redirecting the cable, a composite video switch can be installed. Now, the switch will direct the camera's output to either the DigiView interface or the monitor. To install a video switch, the camera cable must be attached to the input slot of the switcher. A screw-in coaxial or plug-in BNC adapter may be required, depending on the type of switch box and cable used. Two more cables are needed to connect the DigiView interface and the monitor to the output slots of the switcher. The auto command in the digitize menu can be selected with the right mouse button and the motor wheel will go through separate red, green, and blue scans automatically. Images can be modified with an image processing program, such as PixMate from Progressive Peripherals and Software, or Butcher from Eagle Tree software. Photon Paint from Micro Illusions is another paint program for the Amiga with tools and key commands similar to those in Deluxe Paint 2. Unlike Deluxe Paint 2, however, Photon Paint allows the use of all 4096 colors at once utilizing the Amiga Special Ham mode. This is especially useful for modifying digitized pictures which usually contain many subtle shades. Photon paint also contains some unique brush features such as wrapping one around a shape and graduated fills that can be customized. With the rectangle tool and blend adjusted with the light intensity centered vertically, pillars, cans, or other cylindrical shapes can be created very quickly. In some display modes, the Amiga uses a technique called interlacing, which is required for video applications. While this produces a very sharp image, the display may flicker with certain color combinations. A board from Microway called the Flicker Fixer can be installed to de-interlace the Amiga's display, thereby removing any possibility of display flicker. The flicker fixer also removes the black space between scan lines in non-interlaced display modes. The flicker fixer slides into the video slot beside the power supply. Remove the two screws securing the video slot cover and gently insert the flicker fixer, then tighten with the supplied screws. The flicker fixer outputs a higher frequency video signal 
than the standard Amiga video port and therefore requires a multi-scanning or VGA compatible monitor. Here a Zenith flat screen is being used. Multi-sync monitors also work well. Special cabling is usually required to connect these monitors to the Amiga or Flickr fixer. After creating initial artwork with paint software, a graphic artist may wish to create three-dimensional pictures using a number of unique and powerful software packages. Until recently, these capabilities were restricted to large, expensive computer systems. Packages such as Videoscape 3D from Aegis Development and Caligari from Octree Software allow the graphic artist to create wireframe and shaded objects quickly that can be moved and viewed from any angle or viewpoint. Sculpt 3D from Byte by Byte and Turbo Silver from Impulse allow the Amiga artist to design objects and scenes with an even greater degree of realism, using a technique known as ray tracing to individually calculate the color and intensity of every pixel on the screen. The graphic artist can make the objects cast shadows by specifying the placement of lamps. and even set the angle of the lens from which their imaginary object is viewed. Another powerful feature is the ability to change the texture of an object's surface. The textures can range from the dull, rough finish of stone to glass to the brilliant reflectivity of a mirrored ball. While the effects achieved with ray tracing are astounding, it can sometimes take hours to generate a single picture. The addition of a CPU accelerator card utilizing a 68020 or 68030 with an optional math coprocessor can reduce ray tracing to minutes. At some point, an artist will want to output their work to show the client. The most common form of output is a printer. Through the Amiga operating system, almost all software supports a wide variety of printers. The Hewlett Packard PaintJet is a versatile and compact color inkjet printer that can produce remarkable full color and black and white graphic printouts. The PaintJet is connected to the computer by attaching the 25-pin male printer cable to the parallel port. Since Nutex Digiview utilizes the parallel port, a switching box can be employed to allow both devices to share the port. Connection is simple. The Digiview and printer cables are plugged into the switching box A and B connectors. A 25-pin male-to-male cable connects the Amiga's parallel port to the switching box. Select the proper device with a push of the button. Using the Polaroid palette with imprint software from American Liquid Light, Polaroid instant prints, 35 millimeter prints or slides, can be made of artwork. Imprint will also produce the color separations required for commercial full color printing. Several cameras or film backs are available for the palette and can be swapped in a matter of seconds. The 35 millimeter film back has an additional wire that runs from the camera to the back of the pallet to control the camera's shutter. The imprint adapter box comes with serial and RCA cables that plug into the Polaroid pallet. A combination cable is provided to attach the adapter to the video port and the serial port of the Amiga. Once an image is loaded and displayed on the screen, it can be put onto film. The film type must be specified. The black space or raster lines on non-interlaced pictures can be eliminated. Upon specifying a single exposure, a batch or a color separation, and selecting continue, the picture is transferred to the palette. Creating typeset quality text and combining the text with graphics 
is easy with professional page from Gold Disc, a desktop publishing program that contains a powerful set of text manipulation and graphic handling tools. Professional page shows how the final output will look, whether it's in full color or just black and white. Professional page can output to dot matrix, color inkjet, and postscript compatible laser printers and photo typesetters. Amiga graphics can be recorded onto videotape by using an Amiga 520 video adapter connected to the Amiga's RGB video port, or by sliding an Amiga 2300 Genlock board into the internal video slot. The Genlock feature of the 2300 allows Amiga graphics to be superimposed over any incoming video source, such as a camera or a second videotape recorder. An RCA to RCA cable is used to connect the video out on the 520 or 2300 to the video in on a VCR. The most dramatic way to represent an artistic design is through animation. The speed of the Amiga, combined with a wide range of powerful animation software, gives the graphic designer an opportunity to create an amazing number of special effects like color cycling, page flipping, and metamorphic transformations. With Animate 3D from Byte by Byte, any image created with Sculpt 3D can be animated. From spectacular animation, to slide presentation, to full page ads. The Commodore Amiga provides the artist and designer with powerful tools for any size job. Amiga makes child's play of the designer's work, freeing the imagination. Amiga makes it easy. Only Amiga makes it possible.